in the tumor uh, genome, which is uh, critically important to understand tumor genesis and also identify potential uh, therapeutic biomarkers uh, for the cancer patient. So uh, at the genome level, as you know, they observed and employed it actually consists of different type of structural variation events. And each of those types has their characteristic sequence rearrangement. So even though this is a one dimensional genome, we're talking about structures because there's a many different ways through insertion, deletion, inversion, duplication, and you can also make the structure very complicated. So, I mean, even, even if we have the completely assembled or sequenced sequen uh, the, the genome, we'll still have difficulty understanding what kind of a rearrangement is underneath, whether they happen as one single event or whether they happen as a, some, uh, a series of different uh, genome ed editing events. So the popular approach has been used so far is the so-called parent mapping approach, as most of you probably are already familiar with. Each type of breakpoints, depending on how they were created by different type of structural variants, they could have a different type of rearrangement pattern associated with those breakpoints. Therefore, uh, from algorithmic development uh, perspective, we need to have different model or different pattern recognition logic in place to recognize a different type of uh, breakpoints. So which poses this problem as a computationally challenging uh, issue. So the particular challenges associated with SV discovery, including uh, biological challenges, for example, the SVs, unlike SNPs and indels, they are limited to a local context. Structural variation, they can vary uh, in from uh, you know, a few uh, base pairs up to several megabase pairs, or they could involve rearrangement across multiple chromosomes. So the size and the number of structural variants in each genome could potentially vary in a great range. And they frequently co-occur with SNPs and indels and which makes the alignment particularly hard to structural variants breakpoint. And in the cancer genome, similar to SV, SMV and indels, there's a heterogeneity issue. And, and also the structural variants itself has very complicated types. For example, chromstripsis and chromplexis uh, has been demonstrated by other cancer genome study. From technology perspective, because we're still using mostly short insert type of data such as Illumina data, and the reads are not particularly long for the mainstream of uh, data out there. So there's a considerable amount of alignment assembly challenges in order to figure out what is the underlying sequences, sequences underlying each breakpoint. So uh, existing approach, there's a basic two type approach. One approach is alignment based. Basically you analyze a BAM file created by one of the aligners, either BWA, MEM, or some other uh, more precise or less precise aligners. And then the algorithms such as Breakdancer, Daily, and others, we are looking at the alignment patterns, trying to figure out whether there's the existence of a breakpoint and what type of breakpoint that potentially is. Obviously, one of the limitations of this type of approach is it, it is limited by the quality of the alignment. If the aligner does not align the reads to the correct location or flag it with correct information, then there's no way to identify the breakpoint in any accurate way. And the whole genome uh, de novo assembly is certainly a relatively unbiased approach in that regard. However, existing algorithms focus on assemble the whole genome rather than focus on particular breakpoint. So therefore, we, we, we think the purpose has not been, uh, our particular purpose of identifying uh, breakpoint has not been fulfilled by any of those approach. So that basically motivated us to create a new program called Novo Break. Basically, what we want to have a the novel whole genome assembler, which does not assemble the genome in its entirety, but focused on sequences which does not exist in the reference genome or in a controlled genome, namely in a normal genome of a cancer patient. So therefore, uh, the, it's actually, once you realize uh, this, uh, this critical uh, idea, the uh, algorithmic design is actually relatively straightforward. We focus on the uh, sequences which we call novel cameras that exist in the reads but does not exist in the human reference genome 
work in the normal genome. So as I shown here in a, a diagram, so um, so basically that what our algorithm does is we basically hash the normal reads and the matched tumor reads into cameras of size uh, of roughly 31 base pair long. And we basically filter out uh, cameras which exist in the human reference genome, uh, which I named as filter against reference. And if it's a tumor uh, matched normal uh, and tumor study, we basically subtract the camera we identified from the normal reads from the tumor, uh, the cameras were identified from the tumor reads. Therefore, we identify a normal somatic cameras, which are specific to the tumor tissue. And then we have all uh, our critical information identified at the end of this process. What we do next is we harvest the reads which contain those cameras and cluster them together. And then we do a local assembly uh, in each of those clusters of reads and come up with a counting which basically representing the breakpoint sequences. And then we align the counting to the human reference to identify the breakpoint as well as the, uh, the structures of the breakpoint. So that's the uh, diagram of our algorithm. So while we are starting to develop in this, uh, Dream Challenge come uh, online and my postdoc and I immediately get very excited because we know as a bioinformatician, this is the best way to basically understand the behavior of algorithm. And also in reference of our colleagues, we could basically learn a lot from the other submissions. So I don't want to get into the details because uh, Anne has talked about the structure. Basically the dream challenge is a uh, uh, use real reads, real uh, BAM data from, uh, from, for example, cell line genome. However, the spiking uh, breakpoints data in a very uh, accurate and delicate way use, use this BAM surgeon algorithm and created uh, BAM files which are very realistic in a way of uh, it containing the real reads but uh, has the uh, spiking events in the BAM files. So I'd like to go, in, go through a few run of dream challenge and share with you our experience. So the first dream challenge come after we, uh, we only know the dream change about one week before the, uh, the first uh, round of challenge data and we made a submission and we did not do very well actually in the first challenge, we kind of ranked uh, number four. However, uh, it's very encouraging to see we actually have the highest sensitivity in our submission in the first, first round, which basically tell us this concept of assemble, assemble cameras uh, breakpoints has its merit. So what we need to do is basically improve the, uh, the uh, reduce the false positive in our submission. So therefore we quickly started to uh, develop one module which is to uh, construct a score uh, that measures the quality of the county we assembled from the, the data. Basically that will involve uh, you know, measurements of number of reads supporting a contig, how uniform the reads are supporting the contig, those sort of things. Com we come up with the statistics and use that as a filter for our, uh, for our uh, predictions. And in the second round, which is slightly challenging uh, in terms of the spiking sets because there's uh, insertions included, which actually uh, favored our program because we use an assembly-based program, which is uh, actually uh, more advantageous in terms of detecting insertions. So therefore, in this round, we achieved uh, you know, very good results in terms of both sensitivity and specificity uh, based on what we learned from the, uh, the first round of challenge. Dream Challenge 3, which is uh, uh, more challenging in terms of uh, uh, there's more than just SV now. Uh, there's a Yindel included in Challenge Round 3 which is also very interesting because we, under, we think our program has the potential to under, identify India as well because it doesn't matter how small the events are, it's not as they are sufficiently different from the reference, we will be able to assemble those uh, events. So indeed, we actually observe a performance uh, you know, gap uh, to other programs in this uh, challenge. I'm going to skip challenge four. So uh, the reason why we think India is more beneficial to be identified through assembly-based approach has been, uh, we have been studying this issue uh, beforehand because uh, by compare, 
in the novel whole genome assembly identify Indel versus other approach like SAM tools, DATK, and others. We know the other tools are now doing particularly well in detecting large insertions at, at the size range of 30 to 50 base pair, for example. However, the assembly based approach is doing much better. So we think uh, the novel brick program will have demonstrated a similar kind of uh, behavior, uh, which indeed gets validated in the Dream Challenge. Uh, Data. So this is a uh, data from Dream Challenge uh, Celico, in Celico 4, and we actually took the data and ran it ourselves, used GATK, as the pile has uh, discussed, many group has actually used <laughs> this data as sort of a gold standard, so we did that as well. So we compared offline, this is now part of the challenge, uh, difference between novel break Indel core versus uh, GATK Indel core. We observe a uh, fairly substantial uh, increase in terms of sensitivity in detecting indels. Uh, the pink bars are the uh, ground truths. Green are what we uh, have predicted from Novo Brick, and blue are those predicted by GATK haplotype color. As you can see, they, uh, at every size range from one base pair up to 30 base pair, we pretty much has a performance gain in terms of sensitivity. And particularly interesting to notice, GATK haplotype color seems to be very conservative uh, for small indels, one, two, three base pair. I think they are trying to be, uh, you know, because that range of indels seems to be noisier in real data. So I think they are, seems to be overcorrected uh, to some extent. So uh, I'd like to just mention a little bit of uh, performance uh, results from our own estimation, uh, our own evaluation on real tumor data. For example, we use one of the very well-studied uh, cell line, Colo A29, which is, uh, I think it's a myeloma uh, cell line data. And we compare with some previous, because there's uh, already some validation data available in this genome. So we use that as a standard to evaluate our algorithm. So previously, there were two, uh, two publications has, has validated uh, structural variation in this genome. They look like this on the left. And novel break prediction has a lot more, uh, I think two times, three times more uh, break points than those highs already been validated. This basically is not surprising. We know our approach is supposed to be more sensitive. And if we compare with some other algorithm, Breakdancer, which is also written by our group, and also uh, Delhi and others, uh, of the events which has already validated experimentally, we're missing the least number of uh, events. So this is a basically a preliminary results from a real uh, validated. We are looking forward to see what what the validation result will come from the Dream Challenge as well as the ICGC uh, first 63 uh, genome uh, validation results. So we we certainly realize the potential of this type of real approach. Actually, the, a, a novel computational approach could potentially be applied to many different type of uh, study. For example, we're also calling germline as ways. There's no uh, principal difference in terms of assembly breakpoints. And we're also trying to uh, identify, we, uh, you know, uh, apply our approach to RNA-seq data to identify gene fusion and, uh, and as well as alternative splicing events in preparation for the next dream challenge, which <laughs> is the RNA-seq challenge coming next year. Part of the, that's part of our reason. And we also can apply this to whole exon sequence and not just whole genome. And we, we, we are yet to basically evaluate, look into the potential of identify SMVs from our assembly-based approach. So just as a preliminary uh, results, we analyzed one of the uh, uh, RNA-seq data from one of the breast cancer cell line SKBR3, and we were able to indeed identify more known uh, fusion breakpoints in the RNA-seq data in other approach like uh, top half top half fusion and break trends. So I like to summarize. So uh, we have uh, we had this initial hypothesis or idea of trying to assemble breakpoints in, uh, in a more focused fashion. Uh, therefore, we would achieve uh, improved sensitivity and uh, limit the computational load to uh, you know acceptable level. So that was our initial hypothesis, but we did not know actually how it's going to play out until the dream challenge actually come uh, in place. 
So therefore, we, uh, we really feel much more confident now at this point because we have compared our approach with others uh, from very good, uh, very good computational genomics groups. So therefore, it's, uh, it's fair to us, uh, for us to call our algorithm battle hardened by <laughs> challenge. I mean, we appreciate the collaboration aspect more than just uh, uh, simple computation or simple numbers. And there's a wide uh, potential for this type of approach to apply to other, uh, other uh, applications. So I'd like to acknowledge uh, the, my research groups, potential, uh, particularly the postdoc Zhechen Chong, who has uh, developed this algorithm and participated in the challenge. We are just interdisciplinary uh, group, actually, more than just developing algorithms. We're also interested in analyzing and understanding cancer and its clinical utility of different biomarker. And also, per, uh, particular thank Dream organizers, Pao, Josh, and others for putting this nice thing together. I think it's very beneficial to our computational algorithm uh, development community. And also thanks other Dream Challenge participants who has actually served in many uh, different ways to synergistic to help us to develop this algorithm. And lastly, thank NCI and HGRI for the funding. And I have postdoc position available if you're interested. Thank you. Questions? Valentina Boeva, Institute of Paris. Uh, so, do I understand correctly that uh, this BAM surgeon tool for simulations it simulates blunt ends, so there is no homology at the breakpoints? So, you will be super sensitive when you use your tool, which is based on novel cameras. But in reality, in cancer, in many cases, we have large regions of homology. In this case, you will not detect these cameras. That's exactly right. I think that's one uh, critical limitation of this algorithm. However, based on our current understanding of different type of breakpoints are still limited. And in cancer, uh, it seems to us there's more uh, events mediated by microhomology, uh, or they are basically break-induced break, uh, replication mechanism, which will not create breakpoints with very large homology. Of course, I acknowledge if this breakpoint is mediated by a loo and some other bigger events. Uh, I think it's not a fundamental limitation of, to some extent, it's a limitation of uh, algorithm. But we can uh, basically uh, extend further by using bigger K, for example. Uh, I think it's a fundamental limitation of current short reads technology to some extent. We cannot actually identify all the breakpoints in its entirety. but. That's a very good question. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, we could pr presumably try different K and see what's the result, how the result will vary. I have suggestion just you can use bad information uh -huh. and then you identify the same time. candidates and for these candidates for which, for example, you don't see the novel cameras, you increase K and... Right, I think for users, uh, we, I think we, we do need to use an ensemble approach, not just using our own approach. Actually, other programs, for example, Breakdancer and uh, Daily, they primarily driven by repair alignment. I think those can be complementary to the type of algorithm where I just uh, discussed. Very nice work. Um, I was wondering, could you elaborate on how you eliminate the low precision? Uh, what were some of the pathological cases that, that you were seeing, um, that you were initially identifying in the Dream Challenge? The no precision, you mean high false positive rate? Yeah, high false positive rate. Uh, I, I can't speak for other algorithms. For our experience, uh, particularly the first challenge is because we did not have a very good scoring system at that time because we simply predict breakpoint without looking at the amount of evidence associated with breakpoint for us. But, as I described, we quickly improve on that aspect. And I think the second and third challenge, actually quite a few algorithms doing very well in terms of uh, false positives. Uh, they, were, they were able to filter out a lot of uh, false prediction. I think the bigger issue is the sensitivity as uh, the, the first uh, uh, question has uh, alluded to. Uh, I think there's a lot of events we're not identifying even at this point. I think that's because of the technology is still not uh, good enough, in, in my view. Is there software available for others to download? And if so, how is it packaged? Oh my God, that's uh, such an important question. Uh, yes, uh, 
Let me uh, stay at one of the pages. So the software has already available on SourceForge. And if you search for Novel Break from SourceForge, you will be able to uh, identify our, our executable uh, file. And you're always welcome to contact um, my postdoc, zhong at mdanderson.org. And he's uh, very willing to work with you for uh, any further uh, improvement or you know, support your, your research. Thanks. Um. I have a question about um, how to find the optimal uh, settings or filterings of the uh, evidence you mentioned uh, just now if I apply to my own data. Mm -hmm. uh, optimal filter. Yeah, because, uh, well, as you said, well, you have uh, some scores and evidence numbers of split read, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. And, and, but because you have only one slide, do not know how many reads, for example, I should yeah. as the minimum risk. Yeah, I think there's a definite statistic, uh, one, statistics one can be done. And not, a lot of those should be similar to SMV detection in other package. So we need to have a understanding on tumor heterogeneity. We, we should have a more or less some inference on the tumor heterogeneity issue before we can determine what would be a good cutoff in terms of a number of different type of reads. And that inference itself probably require more than just SV to derive. So I, I think this is a, indeed a actually statistically challenging issue. But in terms of SV itself, the particular challenge is there's a different type of reads associated with a breakpoint, more than just reads spanning breakpoint, but uh, I, uh, on the breakpoint, but also reads flanking the breakpoint, how do we all taking all those information into consideration? We actually have one of the uh, paper BMC uh, by informatics had a maximum likelihood approach to basically summarize all those information together into our statistics. And I think we can use ground truth data such as the dream change data for us to identify a more or less optimal cutoff. Uh, thanks, good question.